I mean, traditional publishing is not going to touch you unless you have enough people spending money on you to make it lucrative for them. Yeah, so you want to build your platform a little bit exactly. first. I think as well, um, it's a good way to sort of prove your worth as well, because if you're a bestseller and on the indie list, it, it kind of does the work for the traditional publishers. They don't yeah. have to so, worry about So many selling. examples of it. Andy Weir, the, the lady who did the vampire book, so I can't remember right now. The other lady who did the SMM, uh, the BDSM books, uh, I can't ooh, remember right now. <laughs> Stephanie Mayer for the Twilight yeah. books, and yeah. the girl that did Fifty Shades of Grey, I forget what yep. the call her. E.L. James. Yep, that's who it is. And they're just amazingly popular on the internet. And boom, they've got a publishing deal and they've made uh, films and they're millionaires. And it's all because of, I don't know, catching that spark on, on the interwebs or whatnot. Yeah, I'm, I'm of the same opinion as well. So um, that's interesting. So um, you're hoping to one day be kind of hybrid published then, have, have some kind of finger in both pies. Is that right? Honestly, I would like to just go ahead and skip past traditional publishing altogether because I think they're dying. I don't know right, what it okay. is. I don't. I don't know what it's like in the UK, but as far as like television shows and cable subscriptions, it's dying too. Everybody's on the internet. Content is available all over the place, and you really just have to catch it at the right time. It doesn't make any sense to just be published and be in a bookstore because people are going to be looking for stuff on the internet. And if you're not yeah. available, and if you're not there right when they need you, they'll they'll find somebody else because it's not like there's a, a dearth of you know content out there. You're mm. one drop among the ocean, basically. And you've got paperback and Kindle editions. Would you ever consider doing um, an audio book or anything like that? <laughs> I would love to. I get very uh, intimidated when I try. I've done the podcast thing, too. I just cannot stand the sound of my own voice if I have to listen back to it. Um, Why not? This, converse, this conversational style is great, but not having somebody to bounce off of, it's, it just feels impossible. I tried to do a YouTube video series, too, and it just, I could not stand listening to myself. Like editing is like, it didn't make any sense. Right, But okay. as far as audiobooks go, um, yeah, it's definitely a great way to go because people want a passive entertainment. They don't want to be flipping pages. They don't want to have to read it themselves. They want somebody to do it for them. And laziness. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Yeah, laziness and busyness. I mean, if somebody's got enough money to buy an audiobook, they've probably got a job or they're trying to, you know, stay ahead of the curve. Are you thinking about doing audiobooks? You have a great voice. Thank you. Um, I wouldn't do audiobooks myself because of my accent. Um, <laughs> really? With me being, yes, because can you tell where I'm from? Do you know where I'm from? Oh, I know exactly where you're from, Yorkshire, right? Ah, that's the one, yeah, West Yorkshire. Um, <laughs> so some people find my accent quite difficult to understand, especially um, in America. So some places in America, uh -huh. especially when I'm in uh, they, they just looked at me I like think that's your that's your profit right there because people love English accent in this country I don't know did somebody tell you differently uh, I, <laughs> from experience I've had a couple of people sort of look at me blankly when I asked for something in a store or when I was They're in not Disney be World reading your book, though. <laughs> a lot of people just sort of looked at me blankly so um, I think I would get somebody to do it for me um, but my problem is trust. I don't trust people to do it for me, and I'm not sure mm -hmm. I'd want to split my royalties 50-50 through ACX. Exactly. You're not going to make a billion dollars anyway, so I want every single penny of my own checking account. I don't want to hire somebody to do it. And I think if I was going to do an audio book, I would definitely just purchase the, the file straight away, and then I don't have to share my royalties. <laughs> No, that's an excellent idea. <clears throat> um, I, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, the only other reason I wouldn't do it is when I read my stuff, I'm hypercritical about it. <laughs> I get I get very distracted about the sentences and structure and story and character, and I'm like editing it as I go along. Mm, yeah. I, I, I got to quit eventually, you know what I mean? I got to put it away, and I can't go back to it. Otherwise, I just tinker endlessly, endlessly tinker. <laughs> yeah, I do the same. I think everybody does that <laughs> There's a, there's a point where you're just over editing things and it's like, okay, fine, this is done. I'm going to start something else. <laughs> so um, this compound interest then, um, are you going to be writing more following on from that? Or? You know, the, the story is self-contained in that novel. It follows specific characters to a natural conclusion. Um, I have an idea of doing an Appalachian trilogy um, based on that, you know, that's the opioid chronicles. And then I have an idea for lottery winning chronicles and the obesity epidemic in that area is really big too. So I wanted to follow uh, an obese woman through a romance. So I have the idea for two more books in that vein. Mm -hmm. But as far as continuing with those characters, 
Probably not. Okay. So um, that's great. So I'm just making some notes. That's all just for when I'm talking to you. So it's obvious that we've done our research beforehand. Um, the other question that I usually ask is about outsourcing work. So editing and cover design. Um, so if we could just get your insight into what you did um, and sort of what you prefer to do when it comes to those jobs. Mm. Editing, um, I asked for beta readers. It was hard uh, getting people motivated. My my wife obviously was the first one and the third one to read it and edit it and give me notes. Uh, I had one of her friends look at it as well and give me notes and do an edit, sweep through, clean through. <clears throat> I'm very sloppy. <laughs> I thought for sure when I sent you my, my second to last email and I made two mistakes in it, that was it. I was never going to talk to you again. I know. that's If what it's a I book, do? yes. If it's an email, no. If it was, I think it was your web page where it talked about how you were very big into grammar. I was like, oh man, she's done. I'm never going to talk to her again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but, <laughs> it's mostly books and and printed material, emails and things like that don't tend to bother me. Um, so I, I really wouldn't worry if you're sending me a quick email and there's a mistake. Don't don't cool. fret. So do you not outsource your editing to anybody? Then do you not pay a no. professional editor? I probably should, but I do not. I don't. Not it's very difficult. I mean, I would love to hear thoughts about um, the professional side of the writing and ideas. I mean, but that's not a cheap, that's not cheap. It's very expensive to send somebody your work and have them edit it. Yeah, it is. I agree. That's the same <laughs> reason I don't do it. Um, that and I'm just too, I'm a bit of a control freak and I can't deal with other people telling me, oh, have you thought about this? And have you thought about doing this? And I think you need to add this in. And I just, oh no, I can't be doing with that. I'm good like that. I got a degree in creative writing. That's how I spent my, my undergrad is basically people telling me blah, blah, this and blah, blah, that. I really think as far as uh, being a reader, and a writer, it's it's really important to understand both sides of it and have to have people read your stuff and get the idea of what it's like to read. Like as you as we discussed, I mean, it's like when you read it, you're basically still writing it. I can't read page one without, you know, writing it still. <laughs> yeah. Reaching for my keyboard. I mean, I would make probably changes right now if it was open on my on my, you know, Word document. Software. Yeah, I kind of had that problem. I think I do when I read any other traditional book. He's paid somebody. Well, it a lot happens of money. all the time, though, too. I mean, you got to yeah. figure it's you know there's there's the human mechanics behind all this stuff. Mm. It's not a machine boring holes. It's it's a human looking at it and they get distracted and miss something or whatnot or distracted by something else. It's it's never going to be one hundred percent. I think it just annoyed me because indie books have got this reputation for being mm -hmm. part of a slush pile because they're unedited. Mm -hmm. It just kind of bugs me that we still have to suffer the opinions that we suffer because of it. So it just gets to me sometimes. But anyway, um, your cover design, do you, do you do uh, that yourself? I did that myself, yep. Brilliant. And can I ask how you did it? Are you Photoshop whiz or? Uh, I, yeah, it's completely Photoshopped. I've been messing around with Photoshop for a little while. Um, this has been kind of a long process. I was messing around with Wattpad for a little while trying to generate interest on it. And every chapter I would publish, I would um, try a new scene. Mm -hmm. And this is a, uh, what do you call it? I basically glued two ideas together. And I'm quite happy with it. I think it worked out very well. As far as all my other examples go, this one was my best one. <laughs> I do like the cover. Um, that's why I asked if it was Photoshop, because I'm not brilliant with Photoshop. I use GIMP, which is like the free version. I know, Kim. Um, yeah, um, and recently, um, I've only really started using it to do 3D book versions. You know, when you, you see advertisements for the books and they're, they're all pretty and standing upright uh, in 3D. So do you do the I moving ones? To, that, do you do the ones the that are animated? Ones, no. Oh, okay. no, I've never done them. Oh, I'm so interested I'd love in to, that. But, but no. <laughs> your your um, cover is yeah. fantastic, by the way. It's so subtle, and I love the colors. Your palette's fantastic. I love how things seem to be moving. It's just really, really good. I was very, very um, nicely surprised about your cover. Uh, which, which, which version of which book are we talking? Well, there's only I only know one book, one version. It's the world, I think it is. The one that yeah. you have specifically on your website. It matches the website. I thought that was just really well done. Oh, so you've got the you're looking at the ebook version because the the paperback version's actually got a female on the front, um, and I'm in the process of kind of phasing them out. Um, but yeah, I'm glad you said that actually because that's going on on the new book that's coming out for my book okay. signing. 
But um, yeah, um, back to Photoshop, sorry. Um, I have been using it to learn to do fantasy maps and cartography, so okay. I've got to get my head around that. Um, but yeah, I, anybody that can use Photoshop, I'm kind of in awe of because I, I just can't figure it out. You know, I started, I couldn't even crop images. I couldn't make things bigger. It just, once you learn what the, the, the keystroke is to make things happen, it's, it's just self-explanatory. From that point, you're going to be learning tons of stuff. I think it's layering that I have problems with. Oh, really? That's the best part about Photoshop. I just don't. Um, I, I can't get my head around having to have a new layer for everything. It, I, I tend to forget, and then I make something really nice, and I have to make a change, and then I think, ah, I can't do it. Oh, man. Once you get the layering, you'll be, you'll be flying high with Photoshop. I love it so much. So okay. expensive, though, too. So. <laughs> Yeah, that's <laughs> why I use GIMP cheap. because apparently it does everything that Photoshop does, but it's the free version. So, oh yeah. Um, but anyway, I've only um, used uh, I've used GIMP when I was on Linux. I used GIMP for photo editing, and that was yeah. it. I didn't know that you could graphic design with it. Yeah, you can do pretty much anything that Photoshop does. I did my um, my new fantasy map. I've got a, 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 an epic fantasy coming out called Dragonborn next year, and I wanted a really detailed map, intricate map with you know like a Tolkien style map. So. Uh -huh. Totally. Took a lot of learning, but I think I'm there, kind of. Are you uh, um, are you on Reddit at all? No, I don't even know what that is. Reddit is uh, maybe I shouldn't tell you. Um, Reddit is a fantastically addictive website with thousands and thousands of communities, and <laughs> one of those communities is um, map building for fantasy um, stories. Ooh. Basically, just a whole bunch of people making maps and sharing them on the internet, and got some really talented people out there. You should check out Reddit. Just, I'm sorry, right, right now that you're going to be on it forever if you do. But <laughs> <laughs> never mind writing my new book. I'll just spend yeah, my life. On it. No, seriously though, it helps so much with creativity too. I'm filling up my blog off stuff I write on Reddit. And it's basically a community forum. Yeah, so, I, mean, I like I Pinterest for that reason. I can spend hours on Pinterest. Seriously, I can't get Pinterest. I don't know how to work it. <laughs> they don't like me either. They just they block my websites all the time. They do not like me posting my own stuff. I guess. Oh, I post everything on my own. I have. I, that's the first thing I do if I do a blog blog post. It goes to Google Plus, Pinterest, Twitter, and Facebook, one after the other, okay. and they've never removed anything. Well, well, they don't remove anything, but it doesn't go anywhere. Like the first few times when I was working, I had a food blog for about a year, <laughs> and I would post my food blogs, and they would just dis they would like stay on there. The first few of them did really well, and then they didn't do anything at all. All right. Um, I think it might just be <laughs> getting the knack and getting... It's like the same with anything. You have to build that platform, I suppose. And I don't have that many followers either, but I just I love surfing it rather than using it for my own things. I like to surf and see what other people have put on. Mm -hmm. So I guess that's my um, guilty pleasure. But um, anyway, so let's go <laughs> move on followers. to writing a little bit. Sure, sure. Um, so the first question I'll ask you is who you are, what you do about your book, the second one, traditional versus indie, the third one, editing. So the fourth question um, is usually about self-editing and how you write your processes, that kind of thing. Um, but at this point, usually I kind of hand the reins over to the author and let them tell me what questions they want to be asked. If you're plugging a book, obviously, you might want me to ask you something specific so you can get the information in. So if you want to change any of these questions, it's absolutely fine. All you need to do is just tell me what you want me to ask you. Okay. Um, so the writing question usually is just your processes, what a general day for you is like when you sit down to write. Um, and what advice and things you can give to other writers, particularly those that are just starting out or those that are young and looking to get into writing because that's kind of my audience. I understand. Um, so I wake up at 2 o'clock in the morning, my time, obviously, and um, I start writing. I mean, it's difficult to get motivated. It's like going for a jog. You just have to make that first step happen and finish through with what you're intending to do. Um, and basically just don't take any excuses until you're finished doing what you need to do. Uh, I try to aim for at least 350 words a day, very minimum, bottom of the rung. If I don't meet 350 words, I won't stop until I do. Mm -hmm. I generally stop around 1,500, though. I try to write as much as I can in a three-hour period of time, um, at least try to finish a movement, try to get through a chapter or whatever. But So you write... Per words, not per scene, because I don't use I don't use my word count because I find it off-putting. Love my word count. I will keep a um, tally at the very top of the document of what I've written that day. 
right. Because okay. I'm, uh, what do you call it? Um, I'm a harvester or a gardener, basically. I, one of those terms is right. Maybe both of them are wrong. I have no clue. Got that. <laughs> <laughs> I will, um, and I tend to do this with this novel specifically, and this novel is very important in terms of developing my style of longer work. Because for a long time, I was stuck on the first chapter and then the second chapter. And then I would go back to the first chapter and I would be rewriting these things over and over and over again. And I can't move on. I have this whole thing written out in outline form and I just can't continue to move past the first chapter. Um, mm. So, I mean, you're talking like hundreds and hundreds of words every time I sit down, but I have no clue what I'm doing. So I wrote down the number of words added to the document or taken away from the document. And that gives me an idea that, okay, fine, I did lots of stuff here. I'm going to continue to move on to the next chapter. And everything I write, I just do a word count and put it on top. It just makes the whole process stop seeming so, I don't know, um, invisible, I guess, is a nice way to look at it. Hmm. Yeah. Um, I, you see, I, I was on somebody else's podcast a while ago and she asked me this question. She asked if I wrote to a word count and she was quite shocked when I said no. Um, no, yeah, you do it the hard way. <laughs> I and to, well, I, I suppose it, it, it appears like it's a hard way of doing it, but it can be really easy some days because you, I just sit down and I think, right, well, what needs to logically happen next in this story to move it forward? What's important? Because I don't like to just sit down and think, right, five hundred words, because it could be five hundred words of garbage that has nothing to do with with the direction that I want the story to go in. <laughs> um, so I but tend no, no, to just... look at it like this though, 350 is the minimum. So I mean, if you're working on like, let's say in the novel that we're currently discussing, Compounded Interest, I start out with a guy named Major, he's in his apartment and basically his girlfriend has just ripped him off. And he has to um, basically go through a sequence of events where he you know, finds out for sure. And I know what I need. And if I just can't make myself motivated, at least 350 words in that direction will work. But hmm. every single day I might think, well, damn, I wrote this, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm, I'm from New York, like curse words just come out of my mouth without me even realizing, it. like oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I, I don't know, I think it's, it's not that I don't want to hit a word count, because I do, like 500 words for me is kind of what I, in the back of my mind, I hope that I'm going to write approximately 500 words. But in that, I actually want to just focus on the scene. So, for example, I, I, I'm writing Dragonborn at the moment. And in that, he's my main character, Ash, is, is running through a, a marketplace chasing a thief. So I wanted there to be some action in there. And I wanted somebody to... Um, interfere and I wanted him to use his powers his elemental magics it's a fantasy um in that scene so I sat down and sort of gave it a little bit of thought and noted down what I thought needed to go in and then sat and wrote the 500 words so mm. I wouldn't say it's not that I don't want to write a certain amount of words it's just that I don't force myself to hit it if, if the scene falls short then so be it and then the next day when I when I reread it if I have to add to it then I will but I, I try not to force anything because then I think the next day it's just going to be there for the sake of it. Does that make sense? No, absolutely. It sounds like you're very disciplined in terms of outlining. Well, <laughs> I never used to be, um, but I recently went back and wrote the, the Finding Pandora book that you mentioned earlier is a rewrite of a rewrite of a rewrite. <laughs> um, it actually came out in 2010 when I was 18 um, and it was dreadful. So that was because I didn't plan anything. It was a very complicated high fantasy series with absolutely no planning and no notes behind it. So you can imagine it was chaos. Um, so that's, recently, you know, that's really I, impressive. You're 18 years old and you write a novel. Yeah, well, <laughs> my yeah, first I was 18 wearing a military uniform, barely scratching things out on a notepad that I never kept and always lost them. <laughs> I think. I mean, it's really, it's really time, impressive. I think by the time I was 19, I had about five books listed online, um, wow. probably five crap books, if I'm being honest, but um, they were there anyway. Like that, though. They were you're, there. They're always so. going to be crap to you. Well, yeah. <laughs> the thing you're going to write is going to be crap. I mean, I bet you're not even satisfied with anything you've written now and constantly embarrassed when you let somebody read it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're somebody's um, going to critique you. The, wor the worst part of it was... Um, not so long ago I, had, I was on tv um and they filmed the books they did like a scan of the books a, a pan of the of the monitor table and it just just looking at them made me feel physically ill i just thought 
that that's just it just felt so wrong so hearing somebody read my work aloud my, my boss once did that in in the office and it just I could have just run out screaming so I don't I tend not to read aloud <laughs> Uh -huh. do anything like that um but yeah i had to do a, a major major rewrite and I, I basically used story beats and noted went through it chapter by chapter noted everything that happened all the characters what they were wearing in that chapter um if they had any powers mentioned what that power did um how it connected to other powers and i use runes and and things like that and symbols and signs um and I wrote another language for it. So I had to note down all of the meanings of the words and the grammar and all that crap behind it. So mm -hmm. when I'd come out of it, I had this like 40 page document that was just for one of the books in the series. Um, and immediately then I thought, right, now I can go back and rewrite it because I know everything that needs to go in and I can check for continuity. I can fact check. And it just made life a hell of a lot easier. It took some time yeah but my life's so much easier so now i am a strict outliner for that reason how many books do you have written now like uh, in novels novel went well, after 40 000 word type thing i took quite a lot down um so the published books at the moment i have pandora one two and three mm -hmm. um i have aeon infinitum the first one which is a post-apocalyptic book um and i have um like a, a romance novella that I've re-released from when I was younger. But in, after that, um, there's the fourth Pandora book, which is out uh, next month. Then there's a volume of all four of those that comes out shortly after, which is for my book signing. And then nice. there's another eight books in the series. So there's 12 Pandora altogether, three Aeon Infinitum altogether, Dragonborn that I'm working on, a book called Lucky that I'm working on, and then a post-apocalyptic zombie book that I'm working on called It's All In Your Head. No. So I've got a lot going on. <laughs> yeah, that sounds amazing. That's an awesome body of work. And I, I think you're crazy. You need to um, consider your voice magnificent because you you have a completely understandable accent. It's not like you're speaking <laughs> a Welsh or, or Scottish accent or something. I couldn't understand a word you're saying, but it, it you know, I know it's difficult. Thank you. You don't want to listen to advice. I hate listening to advice. I think it's just too. because I always feel like my, especially in England, my voice sounds quite common. Uh -huh. um it's, it's different to london where the words are pronounced properly whereas i kind of cut letters out and we kind of speak we're just we're just lazy really with our accents so it's cool i like it um, <laughs> thank you as far as like uh being from yorkshire it's considered the country or no pardon is it like yorkshire is the country of uk or is it is it urban um it's kind of country there's some main cities i live in bradford so I'm in kind of a, a, I suppose for the surrounding areas, my accent's pretty understandable. Um, what's it called? Train spotting. Did you ever try to read that book? No. <laughs> the dude wrote it in the accent and it's oh, the best gosh. I've ever done as, as far as following somebody who speaks in a Scottish accent. It's wonderful. I've read like halfway through it. It's exhausting. <laughs> my brain wasn't going to explode. No, it was, I mean, I've got um, a, a character in, in Pandora who kind of speaks slang you know she doesn't pronounce the words properly and just writing that was a pain in the ass so i can <laughs> i can totally imagine why people listening to me doing it all the time would be irritating but people that come on my podcast seem to be all right with my accent and oh yeah I tend to have a practice with them before because then i can figure out whether or not i need to tone it down and try and slow down and pronounce my words a little bit clearer i think you're doing pretty good <clears throat> thank you um, <laughs> So, I, have um, no clue, I have no clue what your original question was. We really went on hand it here. Uh, I don't either, and I've made notes. Uh, um, writing, it was about what you do and giving advice to new writers and what you would say to them. Oh, just write. <laughs> you got to write. You got to read. You got to write as much as you can, be disciplined, and read as much as you can, too. And mm -hmm. go hand in hand. If you're not going to read, you're not going to be a writer. And if you're not writing, you obviously can't call yourself a writer because there's no verbiage having there. So um, what genres do you read then? Um, I read pretty much everything. I love uh, biographies. I think they're one of my favorites. I love reading the history of people, um, especially um, kind of infamous people. Um, I love reading the history of corporations too, like Disney or McDonald's. I love seeing how things get started. Mm, I, I watched a documentary on Disney the other day. It's interesting. 
Oh, yeah. I mean, it's amazing. There's so much horribleness behind the scenes of the smiling mouse or whatever. stuff. Um, I love fantasy. I love science fiction. I'm currently reading um, John Scalzi's new book, The Collapsed Empire, I believe it's called. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I like to write in fantasy and science fiction, too. Um, I like noir. I like crime, detective, police, definitely anything military. I love military history. I love reading about soldiers in combat, mainly. That would be my favorite also. I just love history. <laughs> so you really do read everything. <laughs> yeah, I do. I just, anything that catches my interest, it's not like I, I can stay in a genre. It just I just flip around all over the place. Um, that's one of the other things about Reddit that I really enjoy is the, the amount of variety. I mean, people talk about books all the time, and I'll immediately go and get it. So, I have like uh, hundreds of books on my phone. Yeah, I'm the same with my Kindle. Um, <laughs> I have, I mean, I have three shelves in my bedroom alone, just full of paperbacks because I like to, I like to collect the Barnes and Noble leather bound classics. Um, yeah, because I, I just have not I bought a book them. in forever. <laughs> well, I, I, I kind of I collect them as like gifts and things. You know, when people ask what do I want, it's always a book for my collection. So, mm-hmm. um, and I like the classics. I've got Dracula and Sherlock, and you know, they're, they're just beautiful covers. So I do like my um, paperbacks and my hardbacks. But as for going on holiday, my Kindle's my best friend. Um, but the, the next questions I just wanted to ask you were: Is there sure. anything particular that you want me to cover, or anything that you want to sort of? get into the podcast for either promoting or marketing my, um, techniques. My blog specifically, I'm, I'm keeping, uh, it's, I have a really horrible name for it. It's called Destination Right. Dot blogs, uh, not blogs, but words, uh, wordpress.com. And basically, I'm just collecting a bunch of short stuff on there, flash fiction, some narrative poetry, things of that nature. So we need to make sure that we plug your blog as well as the book. Mm-hmm. Um, and you'll be given an opportunity at the end. So it's, it's usually about 30 minutes once we've had the discussion. Um, and then it'll be, you'll hear me say something like, uh, well, that's sort of it for today, but thanks very much to Brian for being on the podcast. And um, do you want to tell everybody where they can find you online and how they can get in touch with you? And then that's your opportunity to say your Facebook, Twitter, blog, whatever you want, you can throw that in. And any links that you provide, I will actually type them in the description so people can just click them and go. They don't have to remember what you say. Cool. <clears throat> awesome. Um, so that's kind of the final question. Um, then I'll thank you for being on. You can either say thank you to the viewers or you can just remain quiet. And if you remain quiet, I'll just move on. Um, the same goes for any question. If you get to the end of a question and you kind of run out of ideas or things to say or you just want to move on, just sort of wrap it up a little bit, come to a conclusion and just stay silent for a couple of seconds and I'll know that you're ready for the next one and then I'll prompt you with something. Have you not noticed that I fill silences with words endlessly? (laughs) (laughs) Do you not like silence? No. (laughs) I feel like it's my responsibility to fill it with something. Oh, I'm supposed to be saying something. What should I say? Um... (laughs) <laughs> no it's fine it's just it, the only reason I say that is because it gives me the prompt to move on because while you're talking I won't be and it's that's purely because um, Google Hangouts is a little bit awkward if when we were on webcams whoever's speaking the camera pans to so if we're both speaking at the same time you tend to get flashes back and forth and it can be really disorientating for the viewer so whenever you're speaking i won't be so it's not if i don't say anything it's not because i'm being rude you should be able to see me nodding um, but I, I tend to just stay quiet until you come to a natural conclusion or ask me something, because otherwise it, we're just going to be tripping over one another. I understand. Um, not necessarily into video chatting necessarily when we do the live podcast. So you want I to just do a be, voice? I think so. I'd be too self-conscious, I think. Right, okay. Like, do I have, do I have the camera angled enough? <laughs> well you can test all that before we go live you won't just be you won't just come in and then everybody will be able to see you it'll be a right let's get everything organized and i'll count you down and then you'll know when we go live and then when we don't go live when we come off at the end i'll sort of say right that's it for the podcast thanks everybody bye and then i'll go silent and then you'll get a thumbs up as to when you can talk again without everybody hearing it so okay. um I'm, it, it, it's quite you'll get the time to to go through it i mean you can always try it just between me and you, and if you don't like it, you can turn your webcam off, that's no problem. Um, Usually, if my guest doesn't go on webcam, I don't go on webcam just because 
it's the, the whole thing's about you, not me. So if they can't see you, there's no point in me being on there. <laughs> Does that make sense? No, it totally makes sense. Yeah, so um, it's up to you. If you don't want to do video, we don't have to. It's optional, um, but it's there if you want to try it. Then I just feel like all we'd see is me staring off into space and drooling between saying stuff. <laughs> right, okay, and, dr well, and drinking coffee <laughs> you can drink on the podcast you can eat on the podcast you can do pretty much anything you want because it's your opportunity to plug you and your work so it's your interview so basically i'll just go with the flow if you then want to drift off on some other path i'll just follow it and prompt you accordingly um so i really wouldn't worry about anything it's the whole thing's tailored to you and your book so have you watched any of the other ones I watched M.K. Williams. That's the only one I watched, really. M.K. Williams, right. Um, yeah, this Nail this Biters, quite... I think her book was. Yeah, yeah. Um, it just depends, Is there one that really. you recommend? Sorry? Is there one that you'd recommend? Um, Aaliyah Del Rey interviews are quite good. I think there's two on there now. She was last week, and then she was one of my very first ones. I think episode four and episode 17 off the top of my head. Um, she's pretty good um and uh to be honest they're all they're all brilliant they're all really skilled people um katie masters my very first interview was brilliant um and then the following interview with tim heath and then paul jenkins after that because he actually reads something he reads a piece of his work he reads um he's from somewhere in england as well so he's got a fantastic accent and he actually reads a poem in the accent um, so that's quite an interesting one. So if you do want to do a reading, you can do, um, providing that we've got time in the interview, or I can make time for it if you want to extend it. Oh, unfortunately, I think I would have a hard time finding a section without some extreme violence or cursing. Okay, no problem. Or maybe I can find something off my blog. I don't know. I mean, that's a good idea. Yeah, whatever you want. If you want to do a reading, the option's there. Um, what I'll do is I will give you the chance to do a reading before you give your social media stuff towards the end because let's get people to know you a little bit and who you are and what you think before we then read them something because otherwise there'll be no context. Okay. Um, so we'll do it that way. But if you decide you don't want to do a reading, that's fine. You can just tell me in the, the couple of minutes beforehand that you, you want to cut that bit out and it's fine. Okay. Um, what else is there? You know, I'm curious though, um, if there's a question I would like to be asked, it would be basically to ask you what you recommend for independent writers. I mean, you do a lot of interviewing people like us. What do you what? think makes the most successful independent writer? How do you get the most eyeballs? I mean, do you consider me, yourself me pretty skilled in that? You yeah. mean based on my success? Or? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I would say I am a huge introvert. Despite doing podcasts and doing interviews and being on TV and being on the radio, I am a massive introvert. I hate being the center of attention. I hate the webcam being on me. I just hate the sound of my own voice. Anything me related is a big no-no. And the only reason I do this is because I realized one day that if I don't, I'm never ever going to get my word out there. I'm a writer for a reason because I hate speaking. And if I don't speak to advertise it and I don't put my be brave, then I'm gonna get absolutely nowhere. So I just realized that I needed to come out of my shell and get a grip. Uh -huh. um, so I took 10 minutes out of my day to research how to do a press release. I took 10 minutes out of my day to research how to interview somebody, how to set up a podcast, all of these really basic things, how to write a mission statement. You'd be surprised. I mean, there's a, there's a piece on my blog on how to do that if you're interested, but okay. um, how to write a mission statement. And you would be surprised at how helpful it is to have in your mind's eye who you are what you believe in and what you want because until you actually sit down and write it on a sheet of paper you kind of just flip between well i want to be a writer yeah but what does that mean to you being a writer could be being a bestseller it could be a, being a millionaire like jk rowling it could just be earning enough to pay one bill a month or it could just be seeing your book in print whether it sells or not so you need to know personally what you want from being an indie um what because being an indie is a lot harder than being traditionally published because everything isn't just given to you you don't get an editor you don't get a cover designer you don't get somebody pushing your book and handing it to waterstones for them to sell sorry Barnes and noble if you're in america <laughs> um 
so I think with me I just realized that I had to come out of my shell and all of these things were down to me and if I wasn't willing to be me publicly then I was doomed to fail so I think that's the big piece of advice I would give is to sit down ask yourself what you want from your writing career write yourself a mission statement and keep it somewhere visible um, and work to some kind of goals per year although again I've done something on my blog about making goals but like my goal this year was to be in local news for whatever reason be it in a newspaper on a television station in a magazine just in a local newsletter anything I just wanted to be in the public eye for something positive that I'd done so last year I um, I don't know how much you know about me but last year I did some work with a local primary school and I basically created 50 young 10 year old authors and we published short stories in two books about war and we uh, contacted a local tv station and it was literally just five minutes where I thought I wonder if I was to send an email to this tv station they might just ignore it they might just do a a quick notification on the website who knows but if I don't do it I'll never know and I sent it off and I just nearly had a heart attack because I thought wow. that's five minutes of my life where I just thought do you know what what would happen if and I did it and I was on TV and it was brilliant and every time I watch it back I always cringe because I hate seeing myself <laughs> um, yeah but at the same time I just think because I dared to write that goal down on a piece of paper that that was a dream come true for over 50 children they've all, they're all published authors before they're in secondary school they're all in the local library they can walk into their local library and pick up a copy of a book that they're published in they worked with a best-selling author they have been on tv they've been interviewed and so many parents are just so proud of what the children have done and the children now have got something in their background that not very many children have and I just think that's just because I set one goal one day when I sat down at my laptop and I just think indies really need to to sit down and think I don't like to be on TV because I don't like my voice and I don't like my face but if I got over that and I did it what could I achieve yeah and I think that's very important to indies um, there's loads of things loads and loads of things which is why I kind of update my blog regularly with how to do this and what to do with this and why it's important to do such and such because I just think that when I learn something new it needs to be shared because we can all benefit from it that's really fantastic I'm gonna check out your blog for sure I don't do that I, I only write my own selfish little fiction pieces every single day <laughs> well it's good that you write every day I mean I do tend to post something every day but this I have three different blogs on my website so if you go to erachelhardcastle.com and click on navigation you've got my journal which is basically things like when I'm on TV um, me saying thank you to people uh, that kind of thing personal stuff then I've got the author interviews section which is where yours is um, and then I've got write your book which is all writing and editing advice and things you can download and things you can share at the moment there's mission statements organizing a book signing fantasy maps um, converting ebook files for free organizing a photo shoot for free most of it's doing it at a low cost because I believe if you're an indie you need to learn to do things and if you can do it for totally. free all the better absolutely so most things on my blog are how to do things for free or to keep the cost as low as possible there's even things on there like um, character profiles, um, 52 different questions that you can ask an author if you want to start your own interviews, reader research. So I did this thing where I sent out forms to six different readers of different um, ages and what genres they liked. And I basically asked them the same questions and then evaluated it and did like six articles on what that can tell indie writers so what do they look at on Amazon what does that mean for us what do we need to change all the important things that they look at and that they believe in when they shop for a book and basically tells people to look at their own book and compare it to what this ideal target reader is and to see if they're doing the right things to to get that book selling and if not that reader then tells them what they have to do to impress them so they would expect a beautiful cover they like they look at the description first so 
they would expect that to be detailed and some of them aren't right bothered about reviews so you know it gives it just gives indies a little bit more information about what people look for and what matters when they're producing a book so i did a whole series on that uh there's loads of stuff on there it's exhausting <laughs> Oh no, that sounds amazing! I'm gonna—I did not realize that you had such a resource on your on your blog. I'm gonna have to check it out. Yeah, there's a well, there's there's four pages at the moment of articles. There's things about dealing with haters and people that are rude to you. Top five editing tips. That well, as kind I of tell thing. you, Reddit is a whole hater fest. <laughs> yeah, well, I just tend to ignore people yeah, that exactly. are rude. Um, but I have a, 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 a there's a, there's something on there as well about how I outline my series, but it it specifically details my how I log my successes because I'm quite a big believer that positive comments and positive conversations and nice people that you meet it's important to note them down more than it is to note down criticism because I think sometimes one piece of criticism tends to count 10 times more than all the wonderful things people say and mm -hmm. I just think it's wrong I think 10 great reviews versus one horrible review we tend to just believe the horrible review so i have like little love heart post-it notes and a journal that i keep every day to log my process as a writer things i've learned what i've done to better myself as a writer that kind of thing um and my target is at the end of the year to use up a whole stack of love heart post-it notes with nice comments and things that people have said um so that's another good thing as well just to keep track of keep track of all the things that make you happy and that make you feel that you want to continue being a writer because if you do have a bad day you can flick through them and think well so and so said that I'm a brilliant writer so and so said that they loved my book cover and they thought that the design was the best they'd ever seen and that kind of thing so it's just really nice to to note down the positives rather than the negatives for a change oh, this has been an amazing conversation I really enjoyed talking to you oh thank you <laughs> um, one other question for a... you. You yeah. is not unique though as far as interviewing um independent authors and the the blog uh, not the blog, the podcast and whatnot, correct? Sorry, would say you that recommend... again. Well, I'm just curious about whether or not I mean this has been a wonderful experience and I would love to do this with other authors as well and have this conversation. <laughs> do you have like some kind of list of other people that do the same thing or would you rec how would you recommend I find people like you? Because I feel so fortunate that you followed me and I was already following you on Twitter and this became, you know, an accidental wonderful thing. How do I find other people like you? <laughs> I am a strong believer in if you don't ask, you don't get. And I'm also a really strong believer in that people are genuinely nice and genuinely good on the inside and that you can trust most people. And I like to think that even though I, I'm probably wrong and there's probably a lot of horrible people out there that just want to take advantage, but I'm always very open in that everything I offer is for free and everything I offer is done when I say it's going to be done. So if I tell you that I'm going to publish your written interview today, it will be done today. And I don't like to let people sit and I don't like to not reply to people I'm always very prompt so all I do is post something about who I am what I'm offering what kind of person I am and I just stick it in a load of different Facebook groups and whack it on Twitter um you'll notice that in writers I don't know if you're in writers unite are you in that Facebook group no I don't it's really mess with Facebook very much you do okay well writers unite is basically a really big Facebook group that I discovered and the people in there are just wonderful um, I actually met the guy who's interviewed me on the radio in Detroit and he's going to be re-interviewing me as well in May at some point. Um, so you meet all sorts of people. Oh, I am in just, that, actually. You are, yeah. They just, want <laughs> yeah, to, yeah. they just want to help each other. So all I do is I ask admin occasionally if, say, once a week or twice a month or whatever, if I can just post something in there and I just say, hi, I'm Emma, I'm offering free written interviews and podcast interviews to any indie or hybrid authors that are interested. You can be any genre, any stage in the writing. I just want to give you a spotlight and give you a chance to get your word out there. Great way to, to plug your book, talk to another writer, build that connection. If you're interested, private message me and I'll send you some information. And you will be so surprised at how many people say to me, really, there's no charge for this? You really gonna do this for free? Well, actually, yeah. I, was, I looked at your page going, okay, what's the catch here? What am I looking yeah. for? When are you going to charge me some money? 
loads of people just start to say, right, so it'll be how many dollars? Well, it's no dollars. L literally, all you're spending is time. If it's you can spare half That's an so hour. so amazing that you're such a nice person. I was expecting this to be horrible, but you're oh, wonderful. Thanks. <laughs> Oh, that's actually quite sad that you expected it to be horrible. I know, I, I know. It's just it's the nature of the world that we live in, unfortunately. Well, you yeah, never know what to expect. Why, that's why I always believe that you just be a nice person. Just be nice and be approachable and be helpful. And yeah, you might not sell thousands of books, but people will be will be inclined to come to you for help and will then be inclined to download something or just share a post. I mean, I've I've shared something about my book signing and I have people all over the world sharing and tweeting just because I've offered to do something for them for free and they feel that they owe me somehow so they just tweet it or retweet it and there's people in Australia wishing me good luck with my book it's something of nothing and they're making a big deal out of it because they feel that they owe me kind of a thanks and that they can kind of be friends with me because we have this mutual interest and I was kind to them and where most people might not be so I just think if you're going to start your own which I really do encourage you to do um, join some Facebook groups, get a page set up, get some questions set up. I can send you mine if you want. I can send you my template so you can see exactly how I do it and what I ask for. Um, and then it's up to you. You can then just schedule people in as and when you like. Um, and I always, I just say to the people, look, I, this interview can be put up whenever you want. My blog's not going to disappear. It's not going anywhere. Um, if you want to whack it on next year because your book's coming out next year, I can do it now and schedule it. So you don't have to even think about it for 12 months. But then when your book comes out, you've got automatic promotion and automatic mar marketing without even thinking about it because you dealt with that a year ago. You know, so it's, it's just a fantastic way of meeting people and making some friends. And because they then feel that they owe you in some way because they didn't pay you any money, if you then go to them and say, uh, I'll, I'll get an email address from them and just say hi my new book's out if you fancy spending 99p and supporting me you know I'd, I'd be so grateful and lots of them do just because they think well she did me a massive favor and she got me 20 odd sales or 30 odd sales just because she interviewed me for free so why not spend 99 cents or whatever on her ebook and help her out in return so you actually get a lot back even though that's not the reason you do it do you see what I mean no, totally. I understand. And I will tell you this. I watched one video on your website, MK Williams. I think that was her name, MK Williams. Yeah. And I checked out her website and I found her on Amazon and I hovered over by. I mean, it was just a simple conversation you have with this woman over her book. And I thought about buying her book. But the, the, <laughs> like 99 cents, that's nothing. I can just go ahead and buy that and read it and see how good it is. And But the actual action of you clicking that button and checking her out is what we want because sales don't necessarily mean anything i'm again a big believer in in just building that platform and getting to know people and sending your work out for free i have a perma free book and a constant 99 cents book for that reason because i want people to read my work because i enjoy writing and i enjoy what i do and i want to share it and i want people to enjoy it so i have that perma free book so that if people think eh, what's the catch here there's a free book they can try to see who I am, what I'm about, and what my writing's like. And if they like it, great, pay two ninety nine for the next one. If not, nobody's lost out. I've had a reader for free. You've had a book for free. You know, other yeah. than a little bit of time wasted, everybody wins. So I just think be nice to people and offer things to them and just make sure that they know that you are genuinely offering it for free because mm -hmm. I don't believe in paying for reviews or interviews because A, it's against Amazon's policy, and B, I just think it's creepy. Yeah, it is. You never know. I mean, an organic is better. And also, you, you've you taught me something today that I didn't realize as well. I really enjoy interaction. I love talking about writing. I love the back and forth between it. Yeah, I really I, want to start a podcast, too. I, I'm really interested in doing that. I might copy your model and see if I can get people interested in doing interviews with me. I don't know. Absolutely. If you need any help, just give us a shout. Um, all I did was set up a YouTube channel and... Just, I mean, I call it a podcast. Technically, it's not really a podcast because I don't record the audio only and then put it on iTunes. It's it's just technically on YouTube and that's it. Um, but people can download the videos and save the videos and um, they can comment on it and they can share it and they can embed it on their own website. So, uh, yeah, I don't have a huge following. I've only got 56 subscribers, but the more people that click on it and the more people that share it, the more that's going to increase. So it's beneficial for everybody that's on it to share it. 
Um, so I just think it's a wonderful way for everybody to make some friends because whilst the writing community is huge yeah. um, and a lot of people are miserable and won't help one another and are just all in it for the money, the small amount of people that are just in it for the pure joy of writing, they need other people like that to talk to because it's a very lonely existence otherwise. No, yeah. That's how I'm feeling. I love writing. I love it so much, but it doesn't go anywhere. I mean, it basically just feels like, you know, throwing stuff out into a black hole. But um, on my website, I've got 52 different questions that you can use um, if you want to answer, if you want to practice interviewing with people, getting people to send some questions. I didn't think of the questions. I actually got them from somewhere else, but I have stated on where I've got them from. So you can go and check out that person's website as well. Um, but yeah, just free resources, just um, interview people and ask them what, what their thoughts are, what their book's about and get people genuinely interested because people, although they don't like to talk about themselves, secretly they do. Yeah, because... exactly. <laughs> we all have a story that we want to tell, whether it's on yeah. paper or out loud. We want to be important. We don't want to be made fun of and whatnot. Everybody's favorite word is their own name. I don't I don't care what people say. If somebody if I see something online and it says E Rachel Hardcastle, instantly I click it because I think that's about <laughs> me. You know what? I clicked on somebody's video once on Wattpad. You know, this woman that I'd been interacting with a little bit, she liked a few of my stories. I liked a few of hers. And she had a video um, series that she was putting up on YouTube. I clicked on one of it. At the end of the video, she said one of my stories was one of the best ones she wrote that year. And it was like the highlight of my entire life. Did you feel random, like a celebrity? I felt like a celebrity. I was like, oh, wow. Did you know my name. I didn't ask her to. I didn't know she was going to. And she did. And I was like, wow. Uh, I know that doing stuff for free sometimes is a little bit of a of a ball ache, um, because it, it takes a lot of time and it takes a lot of resources and you don't get anything immediately in return, but it'll come back to you in the end. So you know, the, 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 the bad thing is I do this for free anyway. It's not like I'm getting paid to talk to you on the phone about writing <laughs> or, you know, not that I spent, I wrote 1500 words this morning at two o'clock in the morning. It's not like that's enjoyable. It's hard work and do it for free. Mm. Yeah, well, exactly. Paid for it, but <laughs> exactly. do it for free. I, I just think you, the, the the ten minutes that you take now helping somebody for free, it will come back to you eventually because in the future they'll see your name and think, "Oh, he interviewed me. Or he helped me with such and such." And because of him, I sold thirty books that day, or I found out how to fix my cover, and because of that, the traffic to my website has increased. And all I ask in return is that people share the interview and drive some traffic my way. Whether people buy the book or not is irrelevant. It doesn't matter. Just the fact that they've thought, well, I'll check her out. I'll click on a website and have a look. And when I go on my Google Analytics and I check out how many people have been to the website after an interview, it just it makes me smile because I think people do care and they do want to just be interested in a person, whether they want to buy from that person or not. They're interested enough to click the button that takes them to my website. So yeah. it's it benefits me in other ways, financial or, or not. I, it don't make a difference to me. It's all a benefit. That's wonderful. So basically, to sum up the answer to my question is you're 100% unique and you're doing something that a lot of people aren't doing out there. Um, I wouldn't say I'm unique. I would just say that I... I don't know. I'm not. I'm not unique. A lot of people do interviews for free. People like Joanna Penn, um, people that do BookTube, like Jenna Moresi, and all those people. They all started out and inspired me. So I wouldn't say I'm unique. I'd just say that I perhaps offer something that, like you said, people think is too good to be true, and it's not. If people are nice enough to one another, there's no such thing as too good to be true. I've edited books for people in the past for free just because I liked the premise of the book and then and they didn't have the money to pay me and I had the time I had the spare time so I've designed book covers for people that have taken me five minutes but they've been so thrilled with it that they could have held me a party they were so happy <laughs> and it took me five minutes because it's just a skill that I have that they need but in return they've perhaps shared a load of my videos and driven a lot of traffic towards me. So it's authors helping authors. That's, that's all I do. It's not special. It's just, it's just what I do. <laughs> that's wonderful. It was, it, again, it was fantastic talking to you. When do you think we'll do this live? Or did you uh, record this whole thing and we can go ahead and put it up and <laughs> let me have a look at my diary.
You actually keep a paper diary, huh? I do. I do. I don't rely on technology because I don't trust it as far as I can throw it. Oh, really? I am so wrapped up in technology. I would be, if the apocalypse happened tomorrow, I'd be gone completely. Nobody would even know I existed. No, I have. Well, I didn't, up until a year ago, I did. I kept a diary for things like when my car insurance was due and whatnot and house related stuff. But this writing journal has only been going on since last July. Um, but I've got everything in here. I can tell you exactly when I became a bestseller. I can tell you when I were on the radio and what people said. And it's just nice to have everything in one place. Um, so we will do it on the 24th. And we will do it. Oops podcast um i'll keep my notes with it so i know what i'm asking you do you want to do another practice beforehand do you want to maybe log in at say five o'clock my time 15 minutes before we go live just to make sure that everything works yep absolutely yep okay um so 5 p.m practice just for tech i am recording this by the way it's not live so don't worry i'm just recording it so that when i listen back to it later i can make sure that the audio is fine that there's no feedback or anything um it won't ever go live it can be deleted if you want it to be um it's just for my own benefit just to make sure that google hangouts isn't playing up if um if you listen to it and you think it's good publish it i mean i thought this conversation was fantastic a lot of meta I, stuff going on, which I don't mind at all. I might not publish it fully, but I can certainly edit through and pick out the main parts of the conversation and put together an information video, if that'll be of help to you. Up to you com completely. Just let me know what you decide. You're the creator as far as this thing is concerned. If you want to do another podcast, absolutely, I'll do. It. I'll have another conversation with you as well. I usually <laughs> invite everybody back, providing it goes well um, and that they're happy and that they enjoyed it. I usually invite them to come back the next year because I like to see what they've done in a year and how they've progressed. Uh, I am booked throughout May. July I'm keeping free because I've got all sorts of book signings and interviews and magazine appearances and all. So, yeah, I think I'm... Oh, no, hang on. I've got... Oh, no, that's May. Yeah, I'm fully booked throughout May now, so um, I'm usually sort of a month or two ahead. So if you want to come back on and you've got something new to say or new to advertise, just give us a shout. Yeah. So we'll, yeah. we'll stick with uh, the 24th for right now. And mm -hmm. if you decide that you want to just publish this one, we will uh, remain in each other's good graces until later on in the future. Hmm. Yeah, but in the meantime, um, if you... I mean, I always invite people, there's an open invite on my blog to do guest posts, to do submit poetry, submit short stories, submit interviews, whatever they want. So if there's anything you ever want to get as a guest post out on somebody else's blog, just send me an email and tell me when you want it to go live and I'll just schedule it in. It's not a problem. Okay. And also, I mean, if you happen to um, buy my novel and have points of interest you want to mention, that'd be cool too. Or my blog for that matter. I'd love to hear your opinion on my work. I tend to not review books for that reason. <laughs> but uh -huh. um, if I've got some time and you need me to beta read something for you, just send it over. And if I can help you, I will. If I can't, I'll just be honest and say I don't have the time. Um, but there's no harm in asking. If I've, got, if I've got 10 minutes to spare, I'll read as much as I can in that 10 minutes. Okay. Yeah. So, unless there's anything else you want to ask me, I am going to go and get my tea because I'm starving. All right. No, I, <laughs> I think drink and you think biscuits and whatnot. No, I, I'm 100% I'm satisfied, satisfied with this. And we are going to meet on the 24th or you're going to let me know? No, 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 definitely. We'll definitely, unless there's anything that goes wrong or any emergency appointments I have to have or anything like that. But I'll give you plenty of notice. And I usually don't okay. actually advertise that people are going to be on live until that day. That morning, I send a link out saying, if you want to catch me live at 5 p.m. with so-and-so talking about this, this is your link. Log on, be prepared, and we'll, they can actually log in live. And, and I can tell you at the end how many people were watching us. Um, but, you could also invite them to ask questions, too. That would be wonderful. Well, there's a comment box on there. So if they do want to ask live comments, they can do. Um, but they very rarely bother, to be honest. Um, I think I've only ever had that once or twice in 17 interviews. 
Um, but the, the interview is up there for as long as my YouTube channel exists. So if there is any questions on there, if you check once a week, you can just go on and um, and just reply to them and direct them towards all your resources if you want. If they ask you for some help with something, just feel free to chat with them on there. That's what it's there for. Perfect. Yeah, so um, if there's anything else in the meantime that you need help with or if you want to chat in the meantime or, you know, like we're doing now, if you just want to have a bit of a catch up, just give us a shout. And if I've got some time one evening, I will um, arrange time and we'll just meet up like we've done today.